لكن تحديت الظروف وخذتها وحدي صبورا مستعينا بالصلاة كم مرة عصف الأنين بداخلي كم مرة قد ذاك قلبي من أساحة وكم كرهت مصابها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As you are probably aware, watched or even heard the recent developments which shocks many considering the drastic change in a short space of time in the Jazeera al Arab, it, it's just, I'm speechless. I'm absolutely speechless. Whereby the claimants and the cheerleaders of those who label and call the land itself, the land of Tawheed, and as I said, this is all to do with its roots and its foundations to the Najdi Da'wah. Videos have been circulated across the internet slash social media regarding uh, Halloween uh, festivals or marches in Jazirat al-Arab, the Arabian Peninsula. And before I start, let's just play, you know, a video uh, just so that you're, you know, familiar what's going on. So I'll just play the five second clip. I could play more, but at the end of the day, it just makes the heart bleed seeing this. Now this video, it's really targeting the bootlickers. And I have to call them bootlickers because there's no other words to describe them with. You know, institutionalized bootlickers. And it fits them to an absolute T. They label this land, the land of Tawheed, right? And what I need to understand is this, is that this festival itself, is rooted in kufr, rooted in shirk, rooted in wathaniya, in paganism. And are you still going to label this land the land of Tawheed after all the drastic changes? Because look, I don't care how much connection you think that this, you know, da'wah has to the da'wah of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, I mean, the da'wah of Tawheed, you know, if you want to call it that, which I like to call the da'wah of uh, Qatl, what them? Before I play a popular video on this matter, let's just read what this festival is connected to. Because it's a festival full of cover. It's a festival that is connected to the shaitan. It's a connect. It's a festival that's connected to you know shirk and wathaniya. So let's carry on. He mentions Samhain, meaning what the pagan festival is, how it inspired Halloween, and the rituals explained. Some believe Halloween's origins are Christian, or from the Roman. Parentalia festival, but Samhain is considered the most likely source. Now let's carry on. The, fe the, the festival of Samhain dates back as far as the 10th century. Samhain dates back as far as the 10th century, having featured in Irish literature and folklore from the era and is widely celebrated throughout Ireland, Scotland, and the Island Man. It marked the beginning of the darker half of the year. Look, Shaitania, Kufriya, you know, Shirkiya, etc. Between the fall equinox and the winter solstice, if I pronounce that right with festivities lasting for three days. The day was brought about to honor the dead as they passed from the human realm into the spirit world and was marked in a number of ways. SubhanAllah al In the land of Tawheed people, in the land of Tawheed. Historian Nicholas Rogers, author of Halloween from Pagan Ritual to Party Night, see, from Pagan Ritual to Party Night, told Time Magazine that information on the details of the festival is limited, mainly coming from folkloric literature and that's where it comes from so you see it's full of you know dhulumat kufr and shirk and i want to ask the madakhila more so because these guys are the you know uh, the ones that legitimize these tyrannical rulers is the festival of halloween kufr all right is it kufr because before we move on to other matters right we need to come to a common ground this Samhain, the darker, you know, part of the year or half of the year, etc. Is it not Kufr? 
let's get this out Halloween, Samhain, etc. Is it Kufr? Is it Wathaniya? Is it Shirkiya? Before we move even further, right? And if you agree, agree is, how is it possible that the state itself can allow this in their lands? Okay? How is it possible? Because you know the entertainment and culture, you know, uh, department or whatever they call it. They're allowing everything. So what I'm saying to you is, stop labeling this land, the land of Tawheed. October 31st was the final day of the year for the Celtic people of the North. And that day was called the day of Samhain. And this individual, well, Iyadu Billah, was supposed to be the, 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 their god of, of, of the spirits of the dead, of evil again. And according to their belief, the evil spirits would rise to the surface and would terrorize people on that evening. And on that evening, if you did something wrong to a person, they'd come back to get you on that night. So some people would put on a disguise. So you couldn't recognize them on October 31st, on that evening. And then they would be safe. Also, they would burn fires. Now the only thing we find left of that is the jack-o'-lantern that they would put inside of their window, made from the pumpkin. What actually happened in Europe is that the church moved All Saints Day, a day for the saints, they moved it from May 13th to November 1st in 1834 AD. And so what they said was that the 31st night is All Hallows Evening. All Hallows Evening, which in America later became known as Halloween. Halloween. And they depict the forces of evil. So you heard Sheikh Abdullah Hakim quick mention, you know, the history of Halloween, All Hallows Day, and you know, connecting it to this, you know, festival that we see uh, been celebrated in the lands of Tawhid, Bain al Qawsain. Now, what I like to ask now is this: is that you mention, okay, and this is known from the Madakhila more so, and this second wave uh, bootlicking. <laughs> We've got the, you know, like Hijab says, uh, second wave feminism. We got second wave bootlicking uh, from these. Uh, Salafis, you say you cannot criticize the ruler unless you see clear kufr, right? I need to ask the questions to those defenders of this, um, you know, land of Tawheed. So we can't, uh, you know, criticize the rulers illa taraw kufrun bawahan. Okay, that's why I asked the first question is Halloween kufr, right? You would agree, right? Halloween is kufr. No doubt about it. So now what I'm going to do is uh, present a statement from Qadi Iyad. So as you can see, I've got the Al-Awasim wal Qawasim by Ibn Wazir Al-Yamani Al-Mushtahid. So as you can see, okay, Ibn Wazir presents a statement from uh, Qadi Iyad, Al-Qadi Iyad. And he says, لو طرع علي الكفر If he shows us and presents to us kufr, okay, which, you know, nothing happens in, you know, most Muslim countries, should we say, unless it's been approved you know from certain departments ministries and overall it comes to obviously the head of state now again i'm just going by how states operate if you're saying it doesn't raise your proof then obviously this is why i'm not going into that matter yet but let's go into the statement or it changes the sharia so we got if he presents his cover or changes the sharia okay or bid'ah or presents as bid'ah. That his rulership, you know, is removed, okay, or exits, and his obedience drops. And it's imperative upon the Muslims to rise up against him. Now, I'm not calling for khuruj. I'm just showing you what the classical ulama say. And to place a just ruler if they are able to do that. That's what it boils down to. Qudra, shawka, mani. It comes down to the ability and it comes down to having the means of doing so. And then Qadi Iyad mentions, I'm not going to go into the passage in full, but then he mentions that if they are unable to basically to establish against him, okay, to obviously rise against him, should I say, then it's imperative on the Muslims to migrate from that land to another and to flee with his religion. So, I got al -awasim wal -qawasim. Here you go. I'm sorry, you can't call this the land of Tawheed anymore. When you have open kufr, this is open kufr. 
You know, the mujtama'a, the society are allowed to practice a festival rooted in kufr, rooted in shirk. And you're calling this a land of uh, tawhid because they demolish a few graves? Because remember, shirk and kufr isn't just restricted to calling upon other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that. This is open kufr that is being allowed in the society by none other than the government themselves. Okay? Now again, I'm not going into, you know, takfir here. But what we can say is, obviously, from a general perspective, from a general ruling, hukum am, this is kufr, right? Let's we represent what um, Sheikh al says in the Kitab al-Tawheed. That's another, uh, you know, matter altogether. Even your scholars themselves, it's clear, right? I don't need to be an alim or a mushtaqid to confirm that. Takfir mu'ayyin, and when it gets to the matters of, you know, the mu'ane or shurud, that leave that to the alim and leave that to the ulama and the mujtahidun. That's, I'm far from that status, so I'm not going to get into that. One is able to see clear kufriya in front of his face, right? You know, you don't need to be, a, a, you know, a top student of knowledge to see it. Now, what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say about those who imitate other nations? You understand? I'm talking, talking about how grave this is. Subhanallah al-Azim. As you can see my hand, I've got Sunan Abi Dawood. Okay, Sunan Abi Dawood. And I've got a hadith, 4031. Okay, 4031. This is a big book, so I'm trying to get to the st- <laughs> so get to the hadith itself. Hold on, let me get it. Get it. 4030. Yeah, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Almost there. There you go, I've got it. Okay. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is narrated by Ibn Umar. He says, Man tashabbaha bi qawmin fa huwa minhum. Whoever imitates a nation will be from amongst them. Whoever imitates a nation. You see how dangerous it is? Now the floodgates have opened. But yet it's still the land of Tawheed. No, no, no. You're not going to get away with that no more. You're not going to get away with that no more. So anyone that wants to question these uh, bootlickers, the first thing you have to ask them is this. And even that old man, you know, says, what's that got to do with me? I've got drug dealers. But in, 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 prior to it, he... It comments on a certain president visiting Saudi Arabia and he makes all sorts of comments about it. I've, look, it's a manhaj of a convenience. They, you know, the hypocrisy is absolutely unreal. And I'm going to comment on another bootlika at the end of the video. Let's go into another evidence. As you can see on screen, we've got a sunnah al-Kubra by al-Imam al bayha So we've got a passage from Abdullah bin Amr bin Az. And he mentions, Man bana fil bilad al-a'ajimi fasana'a nawruzahum that whoever sort of settles in the lands of the non-Arabs, meaning the Persians, and Al-Ajimi uh, 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 was most notably referring to the Persians. And what does he mention? Subhanallah al-Azim. وَالتَّشَبَّهَ بِهِمْ And imitates them, okay? Or, or sort of carries out their practices. حَتَّى يُمُوتَ Until that person dies. وَهُوَ كَذَلِكَ Okay, and he's upon that. حُشِرَ مَعْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ He will be raised on the day of judgment with them. All of those people, right, who came out and celebrated All Hallows Day or Samhain, rooted in kufr, rooted in shirk. And we've got a certain, you know, state that permits this. Because no one's going to say to me that this wasn't approved from the top up. No one's going to say this wasn't approved from the establishment. Okay? Nothing happens in, in any of the uh, Muslim lands, especially when it's on, you know, a public level, you know, or open, you know, to the public. In this manner, you know, unless it's, it's signed off. And again, do I approve for that? No, I don't. Could it be that there could be one rogue department that allowed it and the top wasn't aware? Possible, right? That's why I'm not getting into this matter of takfir mu'ayyin. I'm not going to specific takfir here. Let's be completely real. In, in our lands especially, uh, the head of state has complete authority. And his eyes are everywhere. You understand what I mean? And you just see in, you know, the, the, the Riyadh, the Jeddah seasons, you know, all of these artists that are coming. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just getting worse and worse. Uh, so is it still the land of Tawheed? Huh? Is it still the land of Tawheed, right? And you won't utter a word. You won't bat an eyelid. And to our brother Abu Musab, what I'll say to you is, remember when uh, Palestine, you've been deceived and protests, and you were talking about 
what's it called? Oh, they're going to block off the streets and block off the roads. Well, what about this? What about this? Okay, that's fine. You know, if you were consistent, right, and kept your mouth shut and not commenting regarding, you know, protests and, you know, evil and, you know, free mixing. Well, what about this? So if you're quick to critique that, and again, you know, we're talking about the and and Muslim you don't play all the nuances for this, uh, but then you're completely silent here. That, that's hypocrisy. I'm sorry, it's hypocrisy. And we're not going to stand for this. Now, another um, bootlicker or second wave bootlicker um, that is, you know, make, or has made his way now onto social media is an individual called Faris al Hamad. So this individual is just like notorious bootlicker, I would say. And he's, you know, on various uh, social media platforms spewing this, you know, neo Salafi ro uh, rubbish and garbage. And recently, right, he is talking about like Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, stop shirk, etc. So if you're quick to talk about, you know, the practices of the 19th century Arabia, or 12th century Arabia about the Shirkiyat and the Kufriyat, what about this? And even Bayt al-Ibrahimi, that's happening under your nose, you know, cover, yeah, nothing. You see, manage of convenience, you know, they, they shift the goalposts as it went. But let's look at this. Recently, our brother Andrew Tate, you know, um, converted to Islam, and there's been a whole, you know, uproar, you know, from the, uh, <laughs> the Muslim feminists, and then obviously you've got obviously back and forths, that's, I don't want to get into that. But this individual is just like, the hypocrisy is absolutely real. Like, halal for us and haram for everyone else. So, Faris al Hamadi, as you can see, social media influencer. Influencers should not use famous reverts for publicity. It doesn't look good. And then, uh, three days later, subsequently, uh, he's taking photos with Andrew Tate. And, uh, you know, I ask Allah to unite us in Jannah. Amin, amin, amin. Now, what I'd like to ask Mr. Hamadi is this, this, this bootlicker. Uh, you made a video because you were getting slated, right? Assalamu alaikum. Just wanted to clarify some of the points with regards to my meeting with Andrew Tate and his conversion to Islam. First of all, I said something on Twitter days before our meeting. I said influencers should not use famous reverts for publicity. It doesn't look good. And of course, I meant by this tweet uh, the intention. The intention. Because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi deeds are but by intentions. And two people can do the same exact thing, but one person might intend that it's for publicity and the other person might intend it uh, for good things and for the sake of Allah. That you said, oh, it's all about the niyyah and the intention. So hold on here. Likewise, when you made that tweet, influencers should not f uh, use famous reverts for publicity, it doesn't look good. You didn't talk about intentions here, did you? You didn't mention anything about intentions. So why didn't you add in your subsequent tweet, because you have 140 characters, that Influencers should not use famous reverts for publicity um, unless you have good intention. You made it general. You weren't, you weren't considering anyone's intention here, mate. Bef before, you know, you got pulled up and said, hold on here, you absolute hypocrite. Look what you did. Because at the end of the day, it's for publicity. I don't know what's inside your heart, nor do you know what's inside my heart. Allah ya'lamu ma fi sudur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's inside the chest. So... Why did you add that in your tweet? It doesn't look good. Khalas, so you're looking at al You're looking at it as the apparent. It doesn't look good when you're trying to use reverts for publicity. So it doesn't look good for you. But then all of a sudden you start using your intentions and, you know, there's deviant sex. Okay, that's fine. I agree. But the problem is, is when someone enters into Islam, right, you don't focus on that straight away. You want to teach them the basics, the fundamentals. So you start waffling because you got to find out you're a hypocrite, mate. You behave hypocritically. And at the end of the day, don't be tweeting these things when you're gonna then subsequently three days later. It's not as if it was six months later where you know that tweet got lost and you know you had a change of heart. You know, you just wanted the publicity, right? <laughs> Hypothetically, I'm saying I don't know whether you wanted the publicity or not, Allah knows. So just say, right, it was six months later. We could let you off. I could let you off and say, you know what, you know, you, you know, it happened, you know, sometimes it was it was an opportunity, but that was purposes, etc. But not three days later, mate. I'm sorry, I can't let this slide. Three days later, you put up a tweet. Don't, don't you realize what you tweet, mate? Because like I said, you've got to manage your convenience. Twist the text up with this, you know, self-righteousness and self-holiness. So let me try to get into the head of these neo salafi madakhila, bootlickers, second wave bootlickers, indoctrinated, institutionalized, etc., etc. Open display of kufr, rooted in kufr, wathaniya, shaitaniya, been allowed publicly, okay, it's still the land of Tawheed, right? 
It's still a land of Tawheed. Even with all of this, it's still a land of Tawheed. Shirk, Kufr, Wathaniya, Shaitaniya, and Tawheed don't mix together, mate. Demolish a few graves, subhanAllah, it's a land of Tawheed. That's the end of the video. Take care of yourselves. Wassalamu ala Nabi Muhammad. ليس الغريب غريب الشام واليمن إن الغريب غريب الأحد والكفن إن الغريب له حق لغربته على المقيم في الأوطان والسكن سفر بعيد وزاد يبلغني وقوتي ضعفت والموت يطلبني ما أحلم الله عني حيث أمهلني وقد تماديت في ذنب ويسترني تمر ساعات